Okay, so Matthew chapter 20. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about nine in the morning and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. To them he said, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went their way. Again he went out about noon at three in the afternoon and did likewise. About five that afternoon he went out and found others standing. He said to them, Why do you stand here all day idle? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening had come, the lord of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. When those who were hired at about five in the afternoon came, they each received a denarius. When the first came, they they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise, and they likewise each received a denarius. When they received it, they murmured against the master of the household, saying, "These last have spent one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat." But he answered one of them, "Friend." I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take that which is yours and go your way. It is my desire to give to this last just as much as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I want to do with what I own? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called but few are chosen. Wow. And this is an amazing part when it teaches us a lot of lessons here right we can learn so many lessons from this parable so you know the landowner went out okay first yeah he went out in the morning and then he had some laborers and then they agreed that they received um, a denial so let's see let's Equate the dinero to let's say a dollar, so they decided to receive a dollar a day. So they were high in the morning, and then they agreed. You see, they agreed, right? They agreed that they would receive a dollar in them, like for the whole day. And then the master went out later, right? So so for later hours he went out, and then he hide other people to work on the land but then when it was time for um, the rewards or for um, the, the remuneration he decided to give all of them the same pay all right so yeah one lesson we can learn here is god does not discriminate his love for all of us is the same. His love is unconditional. That is one lesson we can we can learn from this parable. He doesn't love you based on how good you are. His love for you is dependent or is contingent on his faithfulness, on his goodness. So he loves all of us equally. That is why he didn't have to you know compare or less he didn't have to say that you you came in the morning like you came in the morning so um you see more than the one who came in the evening in the first place the one who came in the morning <laughs> he agreed that he wanted or let's he agreed that he will be paid one dollar so if you agree that you paid one dollar what is your problem i have paid you the one dollar what is your problem i have paid you the one dollar is that not what you agreed yeah so i've paid you the one dollar but then out of my own 
discretion i said say the one who came at the 11th hour i am also paying you one dollar we can also learn something in that <laughs> the love of god doesn't reduce listen the love of god god cannot lower his standard or he cannot minimize his love the standard of his love is fixed you get me so you see he agreed to pay the one who came in the money one denarius now he didn't have to say that because you you came in the evening you came at the latter time i'm going to reduce the pay he <laughs> he get it so god's love it doesn't um it doesn't diminish it doesn't depreciate it is constant so there was no way he could have said say i am reducing the pay why because you came in late no the first one that he decided to give was one denarius and so that was the only thing he could give to any other person who who worked at any other time yeah, yeah. so god's love is non-discriminatory it is not contingent on your effort it is based on his goodness and you see when you read the <clears throat> the verse let me see yeah when you read the verse 15 it says is it not lawful for me to do what i want to do with what i own yeah god is love so he lavishes on everybody as he wants <laughs> you, you cannot question him you know if i'm having my money i have every right to decide how i'm going to appropriate it you cannot detect to me you cannot detect to me how i should spend my money so he says that it's not lawful for me to do what i want to with what i own or is your eye able because i am good you see sometimes as christians we tend to ask some questions that ah look at the way i have served god look at the way you know i i, I have been in this church for long you know I have served God for long, but you know, then we begin to compare ourselves with others. This, you know, this person he recently came into the church and then he's getting all kinds of results. You see, we 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 tend to, uh, we tend to. I don't use the word envy. Yeah, but then yeah, we tend to envy others for what god is doing for them you see it is not as if um it is not as if we are envying them all but then we are envying what god is doing for them why because we still say we deserve better than they do it shouldn't be so i mean you see I always say that if you trust in God, if you believe all say if you have confidence in God, there is no way you would envy. Why? Because you would know that <laughs> His grace is, is is always sufficient. His grace never diminishes. So even when He gives to others, it does it, 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 it's not like um it's not like we are um let's say we have um, one father and then let's say we are we are we are siblings we are siblings is it the more the father gives to let's say your sibling it presupposes that the lesser you get it presupposes that the, the, the lesser you get right yeah so we, be, we 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 sometimes project this analogy to god that you know if god is blessing this person this way then the blessings left for me is going to reduce or it's not going to be sufficient for me no hey his arms is always full his arms is always full his hands are always full his hands are always full 
when Jesus multiplied them the five loaves and two fishes, it says that they ate as much as they would, as much as you know, as much as they could. So it means they ate and ate and ate till so they were tired of eating. So it means that the supply of God is limitless. It it is incessant. So it doesn't. It is not contingent on how much He gives to others. In fact, even when we see that he is giving much to others, we should have more confidence in him that ah, if he has done it for, 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 for this person, he can do much more for me. But then we shouldn't envy the you see, envying is a sign that you don't trust in God. Yeah. Because you tend to um focus on what another person has. You see, you are not focusing on the source of his blessings. You are focusing on what he just have, and then you envy it. But if you recognize the source of his blessings, you won't envy, because you know that if God, who is um, sufficient in, in in grace, if he has been able to do it for him, then he can do much more for me too. So you don't look at the blessings you look at the source of the blessing and then you encourage yourself that oh if if it is coming from this source then this is my god also this is my father also he can do exceedingly abundantly above what i want i buy above what i even expect he can do it for me right yeah so god's love is always sufficient it is super bound it is not continuous you see, sometimes you begin it uh, sometimes we think that it is based on how much we have done for god see, yeah sometimes you, you, we make such requests oh god look at how i have saved you how diligent i have been before you and then grant me this my heart desire you see all these things they are old testament you know revelations that yeah, I I know says some 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 of these things we pick them from the the Old Testament and then we quote it. No, but now it is not so. You you don't you don't pray to God and then you tell him that he should consider what you have done. You know, he should consider how faithful you have been in His presence and then He should reward you or He should bless you with something. No, God's blessings is not contingent on your goodness. He gives. He says he gives liberally without reproach. He gives liberally, liberally without reproach. So that is the love of God for us. So you don't have to, you know, expect things from God based on your performance. You see, the moment you do that, you nullify grace. Because grace is unmerited favor. It it is unmerited favor. So the, the moment you try to you know merit the blessings of god it is no longer grace it is works <laughs> yeah. yeah because when you say that god look on what i have done and then bless me bless me according to what i have done eh, you are then you are taking grace out of the equation because grace is unmerited favor but you are saying that god i want to merit the blessings so look on look on what i have done that is merit. Merit means rewarding based on performance. Yeah. So look on what I have done and then bless me. That grace is unmerited favor. So you don't have to ask God for anything. You don't have to expect God for anything. And then you use your performance or your diligence or your commitment to Him as a bait or as a condition that he should stand on that to bless him no he should rather stand on jesus christ jesus christ has now become the new foundation for the blessings of god all right yeah so that is all let me say these are some of the lessons we can learn from this problem it's so amazing yeah i believe you got it yeah thank you